In this presentation, we're going to set up our bank beginning balance. In other words, we've used bank fees to enter transactions into the system. However, if we had the bank account prior to those transactions in the system, we're going to have a beginning balance that we're going to have to enter into the system in some way, shape or form so that we can then reconcile our books and have everything running properly. So get ready because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're gonna go on down to the reports down below, opening up our two favorite reports, that balance sheet, that income statement. We'll start with the balance sheet, opening that up. Once open, we're gonna right click on the tab up top. We're gonna to be duplicating that tab. Then we're gonna to go to the tab to the left again. We're gonna do the same thing for the income statement. Go on down to the reports. Then we're gonna to go to the profit and loss or income statement and open that up. We're gonna right click on the tab up top, duplicate that tab. Then we're going to go to the tab to the right. We're going to be changing the date up top by we want to make it from 2020. Bring it on back to 2019 because that's where we have our data. We're going to be going to the income statement and doing the same thing. Want to bring that on back to 2019. Update these reports. So we'll update this one. I'm going to also turn on the details down below so we can have that jump to information. I'll do that with the balance sheet as well. So we updated it. I should have updated it. Hopefully I'll update it again just in case. And then uh, we have the detail. So now what we're going to think about is that beginning balance. So note what we did is we entered all the, the bank information, in essence, taking our bank statement and entering like the transactions for it. However, if we had a beginning balance before that point in time, which is common, even if you're starting a new company, then you might have the bank account set up and then you go, you know, start your accounting software and you already have a beginning balance in there. So, so then you're going to have to set that up or if it's an existing company that you're putting into this, uh, this account, then we're going to have to set up that beginning balance in some way as well in order to reconcile. In other words, if we, if we look at what's on our, our account over here on the balance sheet, we have the 849717 uh, and we're, we're at the end of March, we should have the uh, 19728. So we're going to see the, the difference between those two when we go through the reconciliation process. And, and the difference is obviously the beginning balance. So that, that's what we need to add in order to, in order to make this thing reconcile. So if we go back over, note that we will go through a reconciliation process to, to kind of think about this in a future presentation. You will find that if I go back to uh, the first tab over here, so I don't mess anything up on the reports, by going to the accounting dropdown, and then you would go into the reconciliation item down here. This would basically compare the books and the bank uh, information. So we'll do that in a future presentation. But in order to get that done for the first month of operations, we typically have we have to add this beginning balance, which is something that's, you know, you should only have to do one dime. And this will be a lot easier after that point in time. So there's a couple of ways you could do it. I, I'm going to go to the transaction detail again under the accounting transaction detail. Here's all the information that we imported from the bank. We still haven't done this bank charge one. We'll do that in the future. But We've got them all checked off here and, and now we basically need to add. So in essence, you can think of it as basically we've got all the detailed transaction here that happened from, uh, you know, period one to period two, the beginning or the month of March in this case. And then we need the beginning balance. I need to bring that amount in. Now, what's that going to look like when I bring it in? It shouldn't, it's, it's going to be like a, like an increase to the checking account. The checking account's going to go up, you know, because it's the beginning balance, but it's for stuff that happened in the past. Therefore, if it happened in the past, prior to this time period, then it's either something that was income in the cat in the past and then rolled into the equity section. And I would recommend doing this basically start in your new books in January if possible, so that so that you can uh, have a, a solid cutoff of, of a year's worth of data for your fiscal year end, uh, December fiscal year end, because then you can you can you can start in January and move forward. I know we started kind of in March. So that's a, a bit in the middle of the month, but just the general rule would be that if you have the income from the prior period, it would then roll into the equity section in the form of retained earnings. Uh, or if we have this situation where we're basically starting a new company and we just put this money into the into the bank, then it came from us, the owner. And therefore, it would all, also be in the equity section. And if we put it in the equity section, we might put it into another category such as owner, uh, owner draw, that owner slash draw section. But either way we think about it, it should be an equity, right? The bottom line is it shouldn't be on the income statement. Why? Because it was it was something that happened in the past and therefore the income statement then rolled over into the retained earnings. So let's let, I'm going to assume basically that we put that money in and we'll put it to that that draws investment account. 
So how are we going to do this? It didn't, it didn't come through on the bank feeds because it was the beginning balance. So we're going to have to add something here. So I'm going to go back up top. It's not going to be income or expense. I'm going to say more. And the typical thing you would use here is a, is a journal entry. So we're going to have to do a journal entry. So this is uh, typically something that you would see like a debit and credit type of transactions. I'm going to put the description for beginning balance in there. And then uh, the date that we're going to want this is as of, I want to be back in 2019. I'm going to put it in uh, March 1st, 2019. And then here's our debits and credits. So you can see kind of the debit and credit action over here. So then we just need to have our accounts that are going to be debited and credited. The checking account is going to be the debit. So we're going to increase uh, the checking account. So the checking account is going to go up by the beginning balance, which is the 10518. Uh, it's 105.81154. So 105.81154. Uh, <laughs> 105.811.54. 105.811. Yeah, that's the one. And then the other side is going to go to that equity account. So we're going to go on down to the equity accounts down here. So let's see. Uh, can I see more? Seems like a small screen to be working with looking for those equity accounts there we go so then it's going to go down to i'm going to put it into the owner investment and the drawings so if it was from prior year income that's rolling over you'd probably want it into the owner's equity which is kind of like where the income's going to roll over to if it was you putting the money in then you might use this owner investment and draws bottom line it's going to be an equity so in, in any case so then we're going to have the same amount on the credit which is going to be the 105811.54 and so now we're matched out on the debits and credits so that should be okay and then i'm going to say save that then i'm going to close this out and i'm going to check this off as having been uh, reviewed then i'm going to go back up top and see what happens let's see what happens i'm going to the balance sheet opening up the balance sheet and we then have the amount is now at the 197 20, uh, 8, 50, uh, 58. so that's the 197 28 54 so we have yeah 54 that's right so now now it ties out so our balance basically ties out here now we're still going to do the, the bank reconciliation because it's kind of a double check that everything is, is in place it ties out exactly at this point in time and there's no outstanding balances i want to point out that normally when you do a bank reconciliation there's outstanding balances because if we did a full service bookkeeping process we would have like checks that we wrote that haven't cleared the bank deposits possibly that we put in the system that haven't cleared the bank yet but if you're relying completely on bank feeds then it really should just match out because all you're doing is matching to the bank but the reconciliation process will help you to, to determine or catch whether or not you duplicate an entry so if you put two entries in there or if you miss one the reconciliation uh, will help with those things so we'll still do a bank reconciliation even though uh, we're tying out and directly directly to the bank it's still something that you want to do all right, so then on the profit and loss, if we go back over to the P&L, no change is going to happen here because all we did was uh, increase the checking account and the other side then, let's go back to the balance sheet, what did happen? Then the other side went to the equity section down here. So the other side we put into this this equity section for the owner draw and investments. So there's that 170000 Uh you, you may have put it into to the, the capital account, but again, the main point is it's in the equity section it shouldn't be on the income statement you don't want to be paying taxes or, or increasing the income which could result in paying taxes on the beginning balance of earnings that happened in the prior uh, time period or might have been actual investments you want them over here in the equity section in some way shape or form so that's it for now let's get out of here